They call me it. Sometimes sad, but mostly just rocks. And you're listening to it said rocks. Let's talk about anything and everything till we reach the end of our thinking capacity. For the last time, dun dun dun. <laughs> okay, so it's not yet that late at night, but the dogs are pretty quiet. I hope it stays like this for the next hour or so. And um, while we're at it, I actually recorded this episode before, but for some reason, mm, okay, the application kept on somewhat like crashing. It it wasn't recording everything. I don't know why. I it made me so frustrated because. Well, I was looking forward to just getting things over with. I was in a really good flow in recording the previous episode. And I was so frustrated afterwards when the recording decided to stop. Because, well, I was I had so much uh, thing going on. <laughs> like, there were so much stories coming out of me. And I was just so happy to talk about everything that I wanted to talk about for that particular recording and after that recording sort of like crashed I uh I tried recording it again but it just didn't feel the same and so I felt really frustrated so I decided to just not do it afterwards I was kind of looking forward to getting it done earlier because supposedly the day that I'm recording this was supposed to be the last day that it was going to be uploaded online. <laughs> but I don't know. C'est la vie. So I just thought, let's just do what the Romans do. What are the. <laughs> I don't even know what the Romans do. What did the Romans do? Anyway, I, um. I'm just gonna just gonna go with the flow and then I guess let's just get right into the episode. This episode of Etc Rocks is actually going to be a simple Saturday episode. Just closing off that second week and second week of the themes. And I guess the first season and maybe only season, I don't know what the future holds of course. And I don't know how much you've learned about me thus far. If you've made it, you know, if you've made it on this episode and you've listened to everything else, that is super awesome. Hi, thank you. Yes. <laughs> and I guess if you round it up, this is like 14 hours worth of conversations with me even though it's kind of like one-sided but i guess that's fine too but i'm just gonna quickly read my theme again because why not right so i'm just gonna take it easy and talk about daily life the simple pleasures of living minimally being sustainable talking about the wonders of nature and the universe or just fathoming the existence of cats and other creatures if this were the previous recording it would have been pretty cool because that time my cat was sleeping in my room and while I was reading this description it was just pretty cute that my cat was in the room with me while I was recording she was sleeping inside my closet or my bed I don't remember which one it was but she was in the room and I thought that was super cute but now she isn't here she isn't here <laughs> what kind of pronunciation is that and okay i guess let's just get started i um i can't seem to get into the flow like i did you know like um uh, this second best is still not the best but i guess it will have to do <laughs> okay i did have my um point with me as to you know the kind of flow that i wanted to go for on this episode but the thing is i have to pay attention to uh 
the recorder because if it suddenly stops and then i'm not aware of it and i just continuously talk hoping that things are going smoothly i'll probably just cry and um blow off steam somewhere but anyway i have my list in front of me and i haven't really mentioned what topic we're doing for this episode but if we're talking about my um how do you call this my simplicity or being a simpleton although those two words have completely different meanings i just like the word simpleton because it comes from it's something that the minimalists uh joshua fields milburn and ryan nicodemus 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 says a lot on their uh podcast and they call themselves simpletons i know it has a kind of a negative connotation but it's a kind of like a refreshing way to describe myself as a simpleton it's like it's so simple it's kind of stupid kind of thing <laughs> okay I, I i have no idea where i'm going with this but actually i am a hopeless romantic okay hear me out well probably if you've listened to the other episodes you you probably already kind of like deduced that at this point i don't know if you're some kind of genius sherlock holmes then cool hi <laughs> but before i dive right into that i just want to like talk about some of the points here that i've written down and it's actually uh, i've listened to the minimalist's audiobook called living a meaningful life with less i believe it's, that's the, like the whole title of it and they gave this five things that should be important in life or like what should we uh, value most in this life and then they gave this five things which are health relationships passion growth and contributions now if i quickly talk about it i've actually done this on the previous episode of uh, simple saturdays where i talked about things like values and aesthetics right i did right i don't <laughs> i don't even know what i did in my own episode sorry about that so it's really important to me for some reason uh, um like my relationship with people is something i value a lot i even mentioned this on the episode where i talk about being an introvert fascinated by people i just had to quickly check the recorder again because now i have i, mean, I get anxious just um imagining that the recording will suddenly stop in the middle but here we are when I listened to the audiobook, you know, they were, you know, they were talking about that five things and it's pretty cool to me because it's something that I resonate with easily. So when it comes to health, you know, there's things like physical health and mental health, although I'm kind of negligent on the physical side of things in terms of uh, societal standards. I am taking care of myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> and when it comes to passion i believe that i am in a career that i really enjoy i am skilled at and compensated for nicely if that's what's considered as passion there's growth i'm constantly working on myself as you know as somebody who's a christian and a good person and i just want to like be a good influence on myself and everything else around me i'm somebody who constantly works on self-growth i'm highly self-conscious so you know i i tend to be really self-centered and i pay attention to a lot of things around me at the same time to the way i react to those things so growth for me is also really important 
But as to what particular things I'm doing right now, I can't really name anything. But I do have a few goals in mind that I want to set. You know, if not now, you know, because we all have that cliche new year, new me thing, then for the new year. And then the last thing here on, oh, there's actually still, still two things because I haven't talked about relationships yet, but contributions is about, you know, giving back. And I feel like in my own way, or I think that all the things I've been doing isn't just for myself, like my own selfish, I don't know what agenda or, um, <laughs> the things that you know i just want to do i want to do for myself it kind of goes back to the community in the sense that when i'm working when i'm writing it's not just for me it's for other people the reason why i do good things is because i want good things to happen to other people i want to take care of myself because i don't want to worry the other people around me and i don't want to be become like a bad example or something like that I work on myself all the time because not because I have expectations of others to be honest but because I want to be the best version that I can be for those people I'm sorry if you can hear the dogs outside because actually our neighborhood uh, dogs are like just running around in the street and if it doesn't get that loud here at home I'm considering not pausing this recording so I guess let's just get on with it. And then lastly here are relationships. So like I said, I'm somebody who really values relationships a lot. But with that thought, I guess I'm going to pause until the dogs <laughs> stop barking. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. And with that, I guess we can continue. That was actually like a few minutes. I even watched like a... <laughs> I was able to watch a video just while waiting. Anyway... I literally forgot where it was, but I guess, you know, let's just go back to the main topic and that's being a hopeless romantic. Now, I kind of don't like the whole um, assumption or stereotype behind the term mm, hopeless romantic because that just means that kind of sounds like somebody who's delusional, someone who's obsessive or, well, I guess... It's as the, uh, what do you call that? Um, adjective as somebody who's hopeless. But I kind of um, want to put it in a way as being a hopeful <laughs> romantic. Okay, no, it doesn't make sense. So yes, I am hopeless romantic. I guess I tend to see the world in... <laughs> rose colored glasses um with that la vian rose okay i don't know what i'm doing okay sorry so it says here a hopeless romantic is an expression describing a person who has romantic notions about life for a hopeless romantic life means love especially when that person is involved in a relationship they think about love and romantic relationships in a different way other than other people is it good to be a hopeless romantic can't help but dream of their perfect partner and fantasize about things like meeting their soulmate and are having a memorable date with someone special okay so this pretty much kind of like describes every single type of um, personality connection that we can make in the world now i'm somebody who doesn't personally believe in astrology or things like zodiacs but i do believe in psychology <laughs> okay let's just make some sense out of this so for those who may not know i do know it so i guess i do have some sort of percentage of interest in it but i don't believe in it ultimately it's just pretty fun and cool to read about it or just to know about it so i'm pisces i am born in the year of a fire ox that pretty much just gives you an idea when my birthday is doesn't it and i am an infjt my enneagram i think is i keep forgetting if i'm a type four or if i'm a type six i i don't remember i think it's type four anyway there's a, there's a lot of other um, personality tests 
out there but i don't really remember because i'm my favorite one is the mbti that's why there's that the infjt thing but in the anagram description i'm also considered as somebody who is type 4 in brief force are self-aware sensitive and reserved they are emotionally honest creative and personal but can also be moody and self-conscious oh now that i think about it there's also that um alignment um but then i don't think that has anything to do with being a hopeless romantic so i don't remember if i'm a neutral good or something else because um a few years back i actually got the results of lawful neutral and then when i retook the test this year i got true neutral but it didn't resonate well with me so i tried to retake it again and the results i got were was um uh sorry neutral good or good neutral and then what does that have to do with the topic? Let's go back to the topic, people. I don't know what kind of tangent I'm trying to um, go into. But I guess that just goes to show how this kind of uh, personality trait is just me. But I guess I'm hoping I'll be able to go into my backstories without any worries about the recording because yeah i'm just feeling constantly anxious that the recording is suddenly gonna stop and i'm just gonna be sad for the rest of the episode because i try a little bit too hard and then i get hard on myself you know a little bit too critical when things don't go well so the first thing on the list here is i am somebody who easily crushes on people so what i mean by this is that um apart from appearance because i'm i'm also susceptible to uh, what do you call that i can't seem to find a word it's not a superficial yeah it's superficial in the sense that you know the eyes like what they see and the eyes are you know throwing hard eyes I'm basically Clover from Totally Spies, if anybody can get that reference. But if not, let's just <laughs> move on. <laughs> okay. So, if you're somebody who's really attractive, I'll probably have a crush on you. But, it becomes a, a slightly bit stronger than that, like in terms of crush level, when you do something small not necessarily for me or just in general and that really appeals to me in the sense that wow that is such an attractive thing to do like whether it's doing simple things like opening the door for someone laughing with your friends even just walking and breathing or standing i don't know i'm weird <laughs> i tend to show appreciation for the mundane or like the boring details of uh, life. Uh, but if we're speaking from experience, I might uh, go back a little bit in my early childhood. But the thing is, the reason why I easily crush on people is because I'm soft. <laughs> I'm a softie, especially for sweet gestures or or not necessarily sweet but if you do something nice in general something decent something that's supposed to be a minimal standard that doesn't seem to be the case for uh people on this world nowadays which is kind of sad i uh okay let's start as a child i guess i'm gonna start talking about every single boy i remember liking <laughs> well let's see i don't know let's see so the first boy, boy, I remember having a crush on was back in grade school. And it was between prep until the third grade of elementary school. And there, I, maybe I won't really say any name <laughs> just for the sake of privacy. I don't know. I feel like I can say some of the names, given that person um, doesn't really know me personally. But then, um, nah, I, I, I don't want to risk it. So 
So uh, I guess let's just go for their. Mm, no, not even not even acronyms. I'm I'm too anxious about that. So there's this boy in grade school that I share the ride home with. We have this service after school. I'm sorry if I ke I keep on clicking my tongue. It's a bad habit, but yes, I'm sorry. It, it's a coping mechanism. So there's this boy with a really nice bag. You know those um, school luggages where it's rectangular shaped and then you can actually like sit on it if you're like light enough. And I was a really small kid. And there's this boy that kind of established what I um, like in a person appearance wise. So he had this pretty eyes, very soft and kind eyes. I don't know if the face I'm imagining is the exact same face back then, but it's it is what i remember and he's actually kind of quiet i'm not sure if he's introverted but i see him around school with his friends and he's he looks like somebody who has a lot of fun who smiles a lot and he seems like an all-rounder in the sense like he's smart he's cute he's funny or he's uh he's active on i guess school clubs because I remember him being in the Boy Scout um, organization. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm, I'm just trying to remember. This is my childhood moments after all. I don't even remember if I liked any boy before that. But I guess that was my earliest stream of consciousness in liking somebody. And then, although I don't really remember ever speaking to him. We did ride the same... Uh, vehicle home I don't know what you call it in English because uh, we call it service it's kind of like a transportation service uh, it's not really a jeepney but it's some kind of a, it's similar to those Mitsubishi L300 models but it, it, ours just look a little bit different anyway I've always had this imagination or I've always ima uh, daydreamed, daydreamed, or fantasized. I I'm sorry, I can't find my words right now. I've, as a kid, I used to fantasize being able to sit on his back. That was the dumbest thing ever, but that was me as a kid. There were also a bunch of boys in grade school, but I guess I was also that kid who kind of jumped into the bandwagon that just because people had a crush on this person i also ended up having a crush on this person even though they are good looking they're not necessarily somebody who i end up liking but i do remember doing some dumb stuff because of it so let's go to fourth grade there was this i guess let's say he's filipino with a japanese name so i guess he's of japanese descent but i don't know if he's if he's a half or i don't know i'm um, born and raised here but purely japanese but i was in fourth grade he was in fifth grade and it was so funny and adorable like thinking about it now because i had a crush on him in fourth grade and apparently even he had a crush on me and that was like the cutest thing ever and that's probably like my earliest memory of mm, requited love in that sense although we were never together but for, um, for goodness sakes i was like nine years old or eight years old that time <laughs> doesn't make any sense but it was so adorable because um uh, my classroom was on the first floor his classroom was on the second floor beside the library and beside the library there was this um prayer room with a piano in it and i love playing the piano there and i also love staying in the library because i love music and books but also at the same time that was like a perfect opportunity for me to catch a glimpse of the guy i like whom i didn't know at the time actually liked me back it's so freaking cute to talk about but i'm actually not connected to this person anymore although i still know his name and if i search it up online i feel like i can easily find him but 
that would be super weird so i'm <laughs> i'm not going to <laughs> okay and then i remember he was pretty popular kid in his grade because he is really good looking but then for some reason i was kind of like a okay mild profanity i was kind of like a dumbass fourth grader that not really bullied but sort of like con con contested or I, I i used to contest the girls in his class because i i don't i didn't know but i kind of hinted at the fact that they liked him too so i sort of pretended that i knew japanese even though i i feel like i didn't i feel like the only words in japanese that i knew back then was konnichiwa arigato and sayonara but it's not like i could say those words in that uh, what do you call that uh pitch accent or the correct pronunciation i probably said it as konnichiwa arigato sayonara or something i'm i don't know but i probably said something else i feel like i made up words that sounded Japanese but weren't really Japanese and then I said it in front of those girls and it was weird because I don't know why I even talked to them in the first place but I also remember that his homeroom teacher was my science teacher and then my, that science teacher is like one of my favorite subjects you know in grade school was science and then I was one of her favorite students so it was kind of like um hey looky here like you know your homework teacher is my favorite teacher i'm her favorite student hey hey maybe i don't know kind of like a dumb story so long story short we probably spoke like once or twice i've spoken in <laughs> i've spoken enough to know to introduce each other's names and to know which street he lives in and it's kind of awkward because that was back in fourth grade and i don't know if i mentioned it on the podcast but i moved back to the philippines after living in malaysia and i'm back in the village village yeah where i used to live before malaysia and that was where i i was in my fourth grade so basically we're in the same village as that guy but i don't know if he still lives here but yeah i just remember that fact it's so funny anyway uh <laughs> you know in the previous recording i actually talked a, a lot in detail about my experiences in malaysia with boys especially and how i had different patterns when it comes to being a hopeless romantic but i kind of don't feel like it now i think that's more than enough story for now but excuse me i kind of burped a little bit but if i'm gonna like you know just share with you some lessons or like some experiences in like a bullet point form i actually didn't write it down but i'm just remembering i'm somebody who tells the person that i like that i like them a lot even though i was just a kid at that, that time i remember like from fifth grade whenever i had a crush on a boy i usually tell him like the year after or the next semester after i started liking them just because i wanted them to know but never because i want them to like me back i don't know why it just feels nice to communicate those kind of feelings although some people find it sad you know because what if you get rejected or what if you, you know you stop being friends with that person that actually happened to me a lot even in the past few years even now as a grown adult i still have that same habit of telling people and i kind of make things awkward now because i'm um, you know you're not a kid anymore you're kind of like an adult now and you see these things that they have more weight to it even though personally it's not like that for me but ah again c'est la vie <laughs> so i put here on my list so to share like real life experiences so there's that me confessing just because i feel like it i also remember I, t I love to take initiative i don't wait for people <laughs> i usually make friends with them first because i kind of like to have them as my company and like and then eventually i i'd kind of tell them but there were some instances where i didn't really tell people but 
I guess it was just kind of fun to uh, to let them know, especially like few years, like uh, many years later, because like like hey, did you know I used to like you? Probably did, but anyway, that was then. Uh -huh. I don't know. Fun fact. And okay, there are some there are a few stories I want to tell, but instead of like stories, it's just like a thing that happened. So. I make friends with the people I like or if, even if I don't make friends with them, I have some sort of interaction with them even though it's usually maybe non-verbal or indirect or whatever. But I have really strong eye communication with people. I, I don't actually like to stare but I have this glare look in my eye like my resting face. I'm just opening my camera real quickly but I tend to look at people and it's very meaningful in the sense that you can sense that I'm thinking of something in particular when I look at you. It doesn't look like I'm staring out into space. Although when I do stare out into space, sometimes people tend to think I'm angry, but that's not really the case. I'm usually just zoning out, so it's <laughs> it's not that uh, big of a deal. So I hope people don't take it that personally, but... So where was I going with this? Oh yeah. So I I love to give the people I like a stare. A really good stare. Even just from afar. Like I don't want them to look at me back because that is awkward. <laughs> but if they do look at me back, I don't look away very fast. I tend to just linger in the stare a little bit and look away. Kinda like, you know, just like, you know, being a tough cookie. I also used to be that friend who would approach my friend's crushes for them and ask them random things just because I had nothing to fear. <laughs> that was me. And then I also remember those sweet moments whenever my crushes would compliment me in their own way. But I kind of just want to keep those stories to myself for now for uh, privacy purposes because it's it's so awkward to talk about. I don't know. It's it's really cute you can i can almost make like screenplays out of them but i don't know i don't know what kind of projects i want to do next year i just you know i just like having a creative outlet anyway there's that but then i shared all that real life experience about being a hopeless romantic and I speak in the past tense, even though, you know, it's something as something as recent as yesterday or last month or e maybe even last year. I've actually changed so much. So while I'm somebody who used to be, you know, direct, um, fearless, which is kind of a good thing, actually, I guess I kind of matured, <laughs> kind of like ellipsis there because... Uh, that's kind of an awkward thing to describe yourself as but i am at this stage in life where i'm a hopeless romantic but i am not looking for anybody i'm not interested in dating <laughs> this is kind of like counter it's kind of like counter productive in the sense if if that's the correct word it's kind of like counterintuitive no that's not the word it's like it, it negates everything that i've spoken about so far on this episode but yeah hear me out hear me out so while i still have that same uh trait of easily crushing on people making friends with the people i like having them in my life i feel like i've outgrown that trait of just telling them right away just because i feel like it i feel like i'd still tell them but only when the feeling is over you you feel me i don't think i want to be someone who just tells them you know that i like them while it's still there just because i guess of past experiences but the thing is i also don't really close myself off to you know opportunities <laughs> no no that's not how, i don't mean it that way but i I have finally reached that stage in life where I'm not interested to waste time or play games. Although it's kind of weird because I am somebody in the Philippines that they call as an NBSB or no boyfriend since birth. So who am I to 
act so professional about relationships when I've never even had a real one. But the thing is, I feel like I've had enough relationships in terms of uh, friendships, um, mutual feelings with people, or just interacting with people in general enough to know what I want and don't want when I'm in a relationship or when I interact with somebody or anybody at all. Is that weird? I guess that's kind of like the old woman in me. <laughs> it's like that old hag. Just like, you know, I'm sick and tired of life. I've, I've, you know, I've experienced so much stuff already. I'm sick and tired of all of this um, nonsense. I just, I just want a simple life. Something quiet. Something strong. But like a silent force of nature. Kind of sounds like a fart. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I don't mean it that way. Sorry. I didn't mean it to sound gross. But you kind of understand me. I don't know. I feel like I want to be on the same page with people before really committing to something i'm willing to date in the sense i want to get to know somebody be friends with them know what they like what they don't like see if our feelings work with the way we treat one another but considering that you know we're in the middle of a pandemic i don't know how things work out so i don't really know it's kind of awkward but i do daydream a lot i fantasize a lot about these kind of things but mm, i don't know if i'm about to confess or something or what but yeah i i think about these things a lot and if i can be just frank about it, something is that i'm very i find the whole concept of courtship to be very not cringy cringy isn't the word for it but it gives me goosebumps and not in a good way but i guess because it's not from the right person i don't know i really don't know but the thing is i did get a confession from somebody before who wanted to court me but the thing is i was underage so it shouldn't count so it doesn't count I'm kind of considering pausing again for a little bit because I can hear the dogs. So I guess I'm going to pause for a while now. I'm just going to take a quick break. Oh, gosh. I forgot to turn on the mic. So I'm kind of like sorry for like that uh, <laughs> unbearably long pause in between. But yeah, I <laughs> I was gone for a while again okay so we actually passed the 30 minute mark so yes I'm, that's pretty cool let's um just continue on to that story about oh that guy who wanted to court me as a child i remember the day or night my parents approached me and talked to me about it that Oh, is somebody trying to make a move on you, trying to court you? And just remember feeling cold all over and getting goosebumps because I was like, even if there was, I'm just like, oh hell no, no thank you. I I I I was a child. I probably am still a child at this point of of my age or whatever. But it was a crazy experience. It's like, ooh, oh my goodness, can you not? I, I'm just I'm just not ready for it. And even at this point as a grown-up, I, f I don't want to be courted in public. I feel like I want it to be private and quiet and just chill. Which kind of um, sets a high standard because I want a best friend. <laughs> I just want a best friend who happens to be a guy. That I can fall in love with. That is, this sounds so cringy, but that was that's the way my hopeless romantic mind thinks. But I don't know if that's how life works. But like I said, I'm at this stage in my life where I'm not really looking for anything. I'm kind of content. I'm not content, but I'm kind of just okay with the fact that. I'm just gonna be fantasizing and imagining things a lot, like some delusional, obsessive, compulsive 
person that's pretty crazy to think of but yeah that's it has a lot to do with my self-esteem as well first of all because i am a fat person and even those appearances shouldn't really matter even though a personality is like the most important thing i've always had this innate trauma of not feeling good enough just because i don't fit into society's standards of what beautiful looks like and it's kind of sad because it makes me sound hypocritical when i say that oh it doesn't matter what you look like or it doesn't matter to me what you know what other people think you just be you be happy about who you are be confident in yourself you know that sounds like lip service that you know you're not really doing anybody any good if that's not what you think of yourself but the thing is i am like that so i have some things to work on for myself first but don't get me wrong i love myself enough to care about myself but i don't think i'm all that and i don't think i'm any i'm in any level of good that i want to be in okay my my dog is just gonna be <laughs> casually barking in the background i don't know just casually saying hi and just making noise so it is what it is I, let's just get on with life i i don't know i just want to get this over with actually but i do enjoy sharing the this story so far but yeah like i said my self-esteem has a lot to do with my readiness so while i am independent in the sense that i don't need no man to feel happy or to feel fulfilled or complete i f i'm just somebody who wants to have a person in my life am i ready for it honestly financially i feel like my generation is so poor in the sense that you know we are making money we are saving money but we know nothing about real skills about real world about how to invest or how to grow your money or how to be financially independent or how to get out of the corporate ladder and live your best life i don't know i'm not the best person to ask about that at least not now and just going back to the topic because you know I, I mean after talking about being ready and stuff i i'm too critical with myself i like i said like i don't have any expectations from other people but i have way too high expectations on myself just because i know myself enough i know my limits i know what i can and can't do and what i want to do and don't want to do that's why i, I like this with myself Although I shouldn't be. I forgot who said it. But there was this saying that when. Look at yourself in another person's eyes. Oh no it's Ariana. It's Ar Ariana. Ariana. Ariana Grande. Song. POV. Point of view. I want to love me the way that you love me. I like to see me from your point of view. But the thing is that. Her singing to somebody who loves her so i don't really know how that feels i can't relate so here we are and okay since we're on that topic of you know um, relationships and stuff i'm actually disinterested in dating those are the actual terms or those are the actual words that i use to describe <laughs> how i feel towards dating i feel like dating should be done between two people who already know each other enough and just want to spend time together that's why i put a lot of importance on the word friendship because if you have a strong foundation of friendship if you do decide to have um to level up that relationship with another person and you want to date them or you want to be romantically involved if things don't work out in the end i hate it to be completely deleted in the sense that because we didn't work out as a romantic couple we can't be friends anymore or we can't see each other anymore platonically and i hate that that's that's why i i have this whole reservation about dating and stuff 
Because I'm somebody who, once I care about you, I care about you forever. It's very hard for me to delete you from my life. Even if you did something to me or I did something to you, if the love is there, the love stays. And it sucks. But the thing is, such is life and you can't really control other people around you. You can only control yourself and how you react to things. So there will be people that, even though you really care about them, they just can't be in your life. And that's sad. I kind of, I feel like tearing up a little bit, even though I'm chuckling on audio. <clears throat> anyway, when it comes to dating, I feel like the getting to know stage is so important in building a friendship with them first. Because I feel like an actual relationship isn't just about feelings, romance, and all that lovey-dovey stuff. There's a lot about commitment, acceptance, respect, um, mutual understanding, and uh, I guess all sorts of being mutual with one another. Not just in terms of how you feel about one another, the way you treat each other. I feel like it should be mutually beneficial because if it isn't then i feel like it's just a waste of each other's time like if you can't be friends with each other then i don't think you can be a couple i don't know does that make sense i don't know how the real world works i guess this is just mm, mm, kind of like a i don't it's not shallow but kind of like a romanticized way to look at things but that's how i feel and that's how i aspire things to become but you never really know right so when it comes to like romantic relationships i'm not in it for the experience i'm in it for the long run and permanence and i believe i'm somebody who believes in marriage and if you know if things can go my way i just want to skip to the part where where we're a family already and let's just go grow gray and old but <laughs> life doesn't really work that way does it and i <laughs> i'm sorry i'm kind of like just stuttering between my words because there's so many things that i really want to talk about and touch on but there's so many narr narratives that i just want to skip because i don't really feel like discussing them on this episode which kind of defeats the purpose of why we're recording a podcast in the first place so kind of like sorry about that but you can does anybody empathize with the way i am as a person or is this just me and i need to grow up and learn things i don't know is it too much to ask about the things that i'm expecting and you know which should kind of be like a minimum standard if i'm being frank about it and this is why i'm a mom friend for some reason friends come to me for advice about relationships even though i've never been in a relationship but that's just because i know enough about relationships like in terms of communication and how people should treat each other even though you know and that romantic feelings is just like an added element to it there's so much more than that in a relationship and i feel like i've known i know a lot about that to be able to give proper advice about it but <laughs> that's kind of like a weird trope to have as a human being isn't it i don't know and yeah, let's just go into more hopeless romantic things. I'm somebody who believes in the one, a destiny, that one great love or true love, first love never dies kind of. I don't know. And I, I don't know what love is. <laughs> I don't know. I feel strongly connected with somebody who shares the same principles, the same beliefs, standards, and it's a big plus if they're physically attractive or physically appealing to me. 
if we like the same thing, same hobbies or same things that makes our eyes glow a little brighter kind of thing. But I, I I've never been in a relationship, you know, so I don't know what makes me so high and mighty and qualified to be talking about things like this. Maybe I'll save it for a future episode if or when I do experience my first relationship ever. But the thing is, I've experienced heartbreak so many times for somebody who has never been in a relationship. But heartbreak in the sense, not just because they've rejected my feelings or whatever, they didn't feel the same way. Because like I said, I don't really expect people to, you know, um, return the feelings. It's because of the lost or the wasted friendships and relationships that happened in the process. And it really sucks. Because there's also that a saying that goes that, you know, men and women can't be just friends. Or like, people can't be just friends because there's always somebody who likes one more than the other does. But like, it's not a competition. Why do you gotta go and make it one? Can you just like, not? Anyway, actually, you know um how many minutes in are we we are actually 51 minutes in this podcast which is pretty fast wow but i guess that's pretty okay considering that we're almost done with the points that i really want to talk about i've reached this point that i don't need romance i just want it and i'm grateful and happy enough at this point considering we're in a pandemic and everything that physical touch is no no and social distancing is a must traveling to another country is is, um, out of the picture meeting new people is just not that easy anymore you can't really see people's faces in public when they're covered in masks and face shields and uh, the internet isn't really the best place right now to be in but media is all we have life is so it's all sorts of complicated right now so it doesn't hurt to dream it doesn't hurt to hope that one day or one year in two years the world is gonna go back to its um former state or if it doesn't i don't really know either i'm absolutely terrified of the apocalypse but life is short life is fleeting time is time doesn't return once time is spent that's it and uh heist i don't want to waste life don't want any regrets i'm okay as it is i guess right now that i'm that i have really good dreams dreams that are good enough for me to remember and feel happy and fulfilled as much as uh, a new relationship would do because Honestly, as an introvert, I feel like being in a relationship is such a hassle. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a social relationship. It requires um, two people um, reciprocating one another. Oh, there's that word, reciprocate. Constant communication and all that. The thing is, I need to find somebody who's at the same level of my communication and introvert skills. So like my need for alone time, but also... And my need for we time, you know, being together and being apart, like having that perfect balance of um, we won't talk all the time, we won't see each other all the time, but when we do see each other, you know, we pick up where we left off and everything's all great and dandy. <laughs> Does that make any sense? I don't, I don't really know. And if I, if um, life doesn't go the way i expect it to be you know there's always plan b up up to letter z (laughs) i feel like i'm just gonna be a future mom of cats or foster pets or i'd probably adopt children or sponsor children to you know grow into great people and maybe they can have their piece of um wonderful romance and that sort of um, completes this list but I'm still thinking whether there's any more narratives that I may have missed out while um, 
while talking. You know, as I'm recording this podcast, there's an image being drawn in my mind about how things could turn out one day in the future. Am I ever gonna get over my delusion that I'm gonna lose all this weight and look pretty according to societal standards? Am I gonna learn to accept my body for the way it looks and just be happy and focus on other things that are more important than physical appearance? Am I going to meet somebody who's gonna see past all that or love me for who I am or see me as I am or just somebody who's so ideal that it's almost impossible it's like a miracle i don't know <laughs> it feels a little bit depressing to think up think about honestly but i am a hopeless romantic but at the same time i'm kind of glad that i'm growing up little by little just learning how important it is to live your days as they go don't look into the past so much don't think way ahead in the future and just you know right now is all we have so right now is all you should really focus on really and with that said let's wrap up this season i don't really know if i've had any proper listeners except for that one friend if you've made it this far hi there but this podcast has been a great project for me this year especially since i have so many conversations that i want to have with people it's just that it feels a little bit too self-centered to be talking about myself so having a podcast that acts like a journal like an audio journal really works for my setup because i can talk whenever i feel like it i can talk about whatever i feel like and you know just i have all this freedom (laughs) although i am trying my best to stay anonymous or like i'm trying my best to uh protect people's privacy and my privacy in the process but i am able to just share everything that i want to share without much anxiety included and i feel like i've been coping pretty well and since it's almost the end of the year 2020 the this roller coaster of a (laughs) new decade for the world i guess some parting messages is in order it's kind of cliche but you know whoever you are wherever you are i hope you're safe Hope you're healthy. Hope you're happy in a good place. And that, you know, whatever life holds in store from now on, I hope you have the strength and courage to always get up whenever you fall. Because this is the only one life we have. If you're not in a place of privilege if you are in a place of privilege whichever background you come from i feel like we should all live our lives as you know the best that we can but without overdoing it taking things slowly and just staying true to yourself um being staying curious about looking for the truth or finding what works for you because i don't know i feel like we just need to get out of our comfort zones a little more or if we are out in our comfort zones all the time just find that perfect balance for things and i'm not gonna keep you any longer i hope you have happy holidays spend with your loved ones or if you're alone in quarantine is that if you find peace in your isolation or that you could have someone virtually or digitally 
or someone you could be together with in this season and yeah i guess i'll see you around or hear me around i don't know you know where to find me i deleted the blog spot for our show notes so we'll just have our timestamps on the youtube channel i um uh, i'm keeping the youtube channel up i'm just gonna upload the last you know thing on instagram other than that i'm just gonna upload it also on anchor of course i'm going to close this season and perhaps the podcast for good or temporarily and with that i have reached the end of my thinking capacity i would just like to extend my thanks to everyone uh, for if you've taken the time to listen to me thank you and what else is there thoughts and prayers um you know you're in my heart and mind (laughs) being a hopeless romantic again aren't we anyway let me know your thoughts and takeaways in the meantime till next time